an avid cyclist dreams of turning his passion into a business. He consults his banker to help find the best path. Now bike wheels are being built, and all it took was a little push to get rolling. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Clint. This is LBC with Matt Fry. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. So we're still talking about British politics, of course, but we are uh, making excursions to the other side of the ocean, uh, to American politics. But I'm very happy to announce the historic event of uh, Simon Marks actually being in the studio <laughs> here. He's visiting. It's very plush. It's it always like this. It's always come over more often. Plush, yeah. very all, nice. all the throw cushions Absolutely. And, the, and the canapes. The canapes, and the eat as much the as you can buffet. Fabulous. All that is a lie, by the way. There are no throw cushions. <laughs> there are no canapes. There's barely a cup of coffee, although it is quite delicious. Um, Simon. Uh, what, are they, what are they making of us over there? Uh, uh, utterly bemused. I mean, you saw a week ago, almost to the uh, to the to the moment, uh, Joe Biden clutching an ice cream in his hand uh, as he uh, electioneered in Oregon, completely pulling the rug out from underneath uh, Liz Truss, making it absolutely yeah. apparent that his own personal viewpoint on supply side economics, which he had tweeted about and the White House had spoken about, but they tried to walk a very careful line in terms of not uh, excoriating Liz Truss. He was absolutely clear that uh, he thought she'd made a mistake, um, but that ultimately it was up to the people of Great Britain yeah. to decide whether they agreed with him. But for him to say that, for an American president to interfere deal. with domestic you know, economic policies in Britain, that's a big it's deal. It's a big deal, and he doubled down on it the following day because yeah. he was asked whether he regretted having made the comments given the reaction that was taking place here, and he said no, absolutely not. He stood by what he had said. Uh, look, I think more broadly in Washington, there is tremendous concern. I mean, you saw Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, making what everybody here called that mysterious visit to yeah. uh, the American capital. Um, clearly, that visit was partly driven by anxieties over Vladimir Putin's nuclear uh, aspirations towards Ukraine, but it was also driven by the fact that the US government is sitting there in the corridors of power saying what is happening in the capital of one of our most important allies on the other side of the Atlantic. Uh, I've had messages from friends of mine working in the US government asking me what on earth is going on on this side of the Atlantic. Uh, people are now beginning to wake up to the possibility of a Boris Johnson return to number 10 Downing Street, which in many what ways would well, be an even bigger complicating factor uh, for Joe Biden. I mean, he has the advantage of knowing Boris Johnson, obviously much better than he knew Liz Truss, and having some sense of how the two of them can work together and engage. But it certainly won't do anything were, were Boris Johnson to return to number 10 Downing Street, uh, I think to underscore in the minds of the Americans that this country's long national nightmare was coming to an end. Mm. Um, you know, we are used to chaos in Washington, as you know very well. Yeah. I mean, four years of covering Donald Trump, waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning every morning to glance at the cell phone to see what he tweeted, constant, you know, chaos after chaos after chaos. Uh, but if you're going to get yourself out of that wash, rinse, repeat cycle, mm. you need to do it. And uh, otherwise you find yourself like, for example, the Republicans in the mm. United States. And there's a warning to the conservatives in all of this that you've slipped so far from your philosophical and ideological moorings that actually you simply can't find your way back mm. to them. I mean, it's interesting. When I was in Washington for the last presidential election, there was a real sense of anger in the Biden camp with Boris Johnson because they saw Brexit and he being the kind of architect of Brexit as the precursor to Trump. It was the amuse bouche that then resulted in the plat du jour of a Trump presidency. And, and Joe Biden, I think, personally doesn't particularly like Boris no. Johnson because as an Irish American, he sees him as the embodiment of English nationalism. So if Boris were to come back to number 10, that's the same problem all over again, but with knobs on. I think that's absolutely right. Tom Bauer was just saying to you before the break that, uh, you know, Rishi Sunak is more likely to reach a compromise with the European Union over Northern Ireland than Boris Johnson is. Uh, and this Northern Ireland issue is fundamental in Washington, D.C. The threat to tear up the protocol is viewed by politicians on both sides of the aisle yeah. 
as fundamentally threatening to the Good Friday Accords. And I don't think Liz Truss ever fully understood no. that. There was a sense that Liz Truss was kind of waiting for the clock to run out, hoping that in the midterm elections there would be a change on Capitol Hill. And instead of Nancy Pelosi uh, constantly, um, fr from the perspective of now successive British governments, sort of wittering on about Northern Ireland and the protocol and threatening the, uh, the, the trade deal, which is clearly not going to happen any time uh, that soon. But why is that not going to happen, well, by it's the not way? Gonna, it's not, it, the trade deal has always been completely yeah. overstated. Of it's not going to happen any time soon. Yeah. 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 yeah, because trade deals take a very mm. long time, one, to negotiate, mm. because there are so many different uh, stakeholders that want to get involved in the negotiation, and then, two, to pass through Congress. Sure. I think people in London often forget trade agreements have to be ratified by Congress that is never a rapid uh, process. But this perceived threat to the Good Friday Agreement, it's not just Democrats, Biden and Pelosi, mm. that view this as a perceived threat. There are many Republicans that do as well. Just one more about um, our relationship with Washington. When I was in Washington, you know, which is now some time ago, barely any American spoke about the special relationship. Mm. There was that one moment when Trump spoke about it with Theresa May at Chequers, and he was always taking the mickey. He was saying, this is the most special of special, special relationships anyone's ever had. He wasn't being serious, I think. Does anyone ever talk about it still? Well, they pay lip service to the concept of the special mm. relationship. I mean, I was actually just rereading a, a fabulous book about the history of the special relationship called The Churchill Complex by Ian Baruma. I don't know mm. if, you, oh, yeah. if you've read Excellent. it. Yeah. Absolutely fascinating because it really demonstrates that there was a special relationship between about 1945 and 1947. And you could argue that there was a bit of a special relationship between Tony Blair and George W. And Bush. And Thatcher and Reagan. And Thatcher and Reagan, yeah. of course. But for the most part, the special relationship has never been as special as both yeah. sides have proclaimed it to be. And in Tony Blair's case, it became a fatal attraction. Absolutely. Yeah. And is absolutely contingent upon the personalities of the two people running both governments mm. and contingent upon the relationship that the Prime Minister of the day has with the rest of Europe. Mm. And those are movable feasts. Where we were with Truss and Biden yeah. was clearly heading down an absolutely blind alley that was going to get everybody nowhere. And the one thing that I think many people in the current governing sort of governing party to understand is that our relationship with Europe yes. was crucial to our appreciation in Washington. Well, and also the fact that now, and this began, uh, I think, in the latter stages of the uh, Obama administration, uh, when John Kerry was Secretary of State, they always refer to the French as America's oldest ally. There is no uh, press conference mm. or statement, uh, press statement that is released by the White House that refers to President Macron or France without in interjecting yes. that America's oldest ally phrase. Who helped them defeat the Brits at the time. OK, Donald Trump. So he's been subpoenaed by the January the 6th Committee on the Capitol Riots to appear before them. Will he? He's tempted to, and he indicated a couple of weeks ago that he really wants to. Because he's... Because he's again, ready the to... the limelight, he, he hates the limelight, yeah. and he believes that he can sit there and argue that whatever his protesters may have done, it was all Nancy Pelosi's fault. She knew there was going to be violence. She didn't do mm. enough to protect the Capitol. The more likely reality is that he chooses not to testify, not to take the Fifth Amendment in public, to fight this all the way to the Supreme Court safe in the knowledge that the clock is ticking. Midterm elections, November the 8th, if the Republicans, as looks, like, as looks likely, win uh, control of the House of Representatives, by the time we get to January, that January the 6th committee dissolves, is placed on right. the ash heap of political history, and this issue will resolve itself. But what's the downside for him appearing right now? Well, the downside of him appearing right now is that at some point he would have to plead the Fifth Amendment. I mean, we've seen other figures within his administration yeah. questioned by the committee and pleading the Fifth right. Amendment on... Absurd and as he once said himself, the fifth is for losers. The fifth yeah. is for the former National Security yeah. Advisor Michael Flynn pleading the Fifth Amendment when asked if he actually believes in the peaceful transfer of power. Yeah. The Fifth Amendment, of course, being what you plead against self-incrimination. Yeah. So there's a risk to him in that. He might fancy the idea of obfuscating and trying to uh, uh, sort of prove that he's faster on his feet than they are. I think that would be a very high-stakes game, and none of his advisors would recommend it. I'm coming over to the ES yes, for the midterm elections. I will be sitting in your wonderful Absolutely. studio in Washington. What, how is that looking? Because it was looking very grim for the Democrats earlier this year, yeah. but I'm, I keep hearing that Roe v. Wade, the decision of the Supreme Court to overturn 
you know, this, this right to, to choice, right to abortion has galvanized and energized the Democrat base. Is that true or not? I think it's galvanized and energized some members of the Democrat base who, let's be honest, were always going to vote for Democrat candidates anyway. But if you look at the polling and the New York Times Siena poll this week uh, that shows 49% uh, of uh, voters planning to back Republican candidates and 46% of voters planning to back Democratic candidates, even if those top line numbers are within the margin of error, when you drill down into the poll, the biggest issue driving voters is the economy. It's the economy stupid. Inflation, now rising gas prices, thanks Again, to the I thought they were coming down no, for No, because uh, OPEC Plus uh, yes. curbed uh, output. Biden's released so another Mohammed 180 million dollars. Really yeah, Joe I mean, Biden oh, on this oh one. and they're few. I mean, now they're recalibrating the relationship yeah. with Saudi Arabia <laughs> after the president traipsed to bunch, Saudi Arabia. You know. So he's released more uh, 180 million barrels more from the Strategic Petroleum Oil Reserve. But there is every indication that the price will rise at the pumps between now and Election Day. But more broadly than that, I mean, like millions and millions of Americans, I have one of these 401k retirement uh, plans. I daren't look at it mm. now because it has lost so much of its value over the last 18 right. months. And you can argue, as Joe Biden did in that ice cream parlour a week ago, that the American economy is strong as hell, but the voters sitting across each other over the dinner table... Mm. Don't feel it. OK, so you think that the Democrats will lose the House? I think, I think, I think it's absolutely... OK. I, I will, I will not say okay. it's guaranteed. It's Highly only... likely they will lose the House. The Senate, the Senate is a different matter. Remember, it's 50-50 now. Yeah. Had the Republicans not picked a slate of absolutely shocking, woeful, shocking woeful candidates, candidates yeah. you would confidently predict they were going to end up with 53, 54 seats in the Senate. Could be 50-50, could be 51-49 mm. in either direction, everything to play for. Um, and that's important because if it, if they, if it's, I mean, it, does he become a lame duck president if it's still 50-50 well, in the Senate? he becomes a lame duck president. He becomes half a lame duck if he loses control right. of the House of Representatives. And his big, and the bigger problem he's going to face is if he loses one or both chambers, the morning after the votes are counted, every single reporter will only want to ask him one question. Are you running again yes, in 2024? And the, it's a yes or no question. It is. It is indeed. Uh, fascinating stuff. We'll be talking about much of that when I get to I'll Washington. I'll see you there. Simon Marks, great pleasure to have you in the studio here in London. I'm Matt Fry. This is LBC. The time is 11.47. When it comes to business travel in Orlando, it's never business as usual. Sure, I could go on for days about all the incredible places to hold meetings, or the Michelin dining, or the breadth of industries that call it home. But when it's time for your business to make the extraordinary happen, Albert Monero of Limitless Solutions said it best, Orlando is an incredible place for innovation. So dive in and see what's happening in Orlando where the possibilities for business travel are unbelievably real. Learn more at orlandoforbusiness.com.